Hello and welcome. I am Professor Rashmi Raman and we are now at module 25. This module is titled Landmark Decisions of the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Uh, let us first look as we always do at the learning outcomes. Through the present module, you shall be acquainted with the various landmark decisions of the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, a court whose establishment and functioning you have already studied in foregoing modules. In this module, we will also give you an insight into the functioning of the tribunal and its efforts in the larger context of justice to achieve its purpose of ending impunity for the genocide committed in Rwanda in 1995. This module, uh, like all other modules, contains um, an ass a self-assessment section that tests your understanding regarding topics under the ICTR's jurisdiction. Let us begin with looking at the prime purpose for the tribunal. As you know from foregoing discussions, the prime purpose for the ICTR is to prosecute those most responsible for genocide and other serious violations in terms of international humanitarian law and customary international law that took place in the territory of Rwanda and neighboring states in the genocide of 1995. This uh, tribunal is an attempt to fulfill the purpose and consequently curtail the above activities of the tribunal. The tribunal has uh, prosecuted 93 individuals in the last 20 years of its decision. It has also delivered over 120 landmark decisions in furtherance of its purpose. We will discuss some of these in the course of this module. The first case that I would like to discuss with you is a case that we have encountered before when we studied rape as a war crime and also when we looked at genocide. This is the case of prosecutor versus Jean-Paul Akayasu. The defendant Jean-Paul Akayasu served as a mayor of the Taba commune. As a mayor, he was a powerful individual who had the responsibility and the primary responsibility for maintaining peace and security and order in the Taba commune. He exercised exclusive control over the police force. Under his watch, over 2,000 Tutsi people were killed between 7th April and the end of June 1994. On 13th February 1996, Jean-Paul Akayasu was charged with genocide. Complicity in genocide, direct and public incitement to commit genocide, and extermination, murder, torture, rape, inhumane acts as crimes against humanity, and murder, cruel treatment, and outrages upon personal dignity, including rape, violations of the laws and customs of war. The trial chamber of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda found him guilty and uh, on the counts of genocide, direct and indirect, as well as the multiple crimes against humanity that he was indicted for. Akayesu subsequently appealed. The defense taken by Akayesu was that he had no part to play in the accusation because he wasn't able to exercise any control over the situation. He also objected to the fact that he wasn't being represented in the court of law in the best possible manner and that his defense counsel were inadequate. All the explanations and defenses given by Akayasu were found redundant in front of the court and on October 2nd, 1998, Jean-Paul Akayasu was given the life imprisonment by the appeals chamber. The second case is the case of Edward Karemera and Matthew Nigurum Patse versus the prosecutor. Um, Edward Karemera was um, a former Rwandan politician, primarily known before the ICTR for his role in the Rwandan genocide. When the civil war began in Rwanda, uh, he had opposed the government to the Tutsi-dominated Rwandan Patriotic Front. Of course, the civil war was brought to an end by the Arusha Accords. The Rwandan Patriotic Front, the so-called RPF, under the leadership of Paul Kagame, implemented a transitional multi-party uh, government making Juvenal Habyarimana of the Mouvement Républicain National pour la démocratie et le développement, uh, the French name uh, here and after MRND, its president. 
Following the death of Juvenal Haberimana on April 6, 1994, aggression broke out once again. The MRND, uh, in collaboration with the accused, Matthew Ngurum Patse, as the president of the MRND, and his co-accused, Edward Karamera, as the vice president, introduced and implemented various actions designed to specifically target the Tutsi population. Nigurum Patse and Karamera effectively supported the Intera Hamwe. The Intera Hamwe were a Hutu paramilitary organization that acted as the youth wing of the MRND. And the Intera Hamwe was largely responsible for the mass killing, rape, and sexual assault against innumerable Tutsi women, estimated to be about 800,000. The accused interfered with the territorial administration in Rwanda, warning local officials to support the Hutu policy and replacing anyone who opposed the killing of Tutsi, including, of course, the minority Hutu who were against it. The accused, that is Matthew Ngurumpatse and Edward Karamera, traveled across the distance of government-controlled paths of Rwanda and publicly espoused their anti-Tutsi policy with a view to inciting more killings. For many years, Karimera was said to have consented to, executed and partook in a plan aimed at the systemic, systematic extermination of the Tutsi population by spreading hatred and ethnic violence, by the distribution of arms to militia and by the preparation of lists of people who were to be killed. Karimera fled Rwanda after the genocide. On June 5th, 1998, he was arrested in Lomo, in Togo. His trial was held before the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda on September 19th, 2005. Karimera was accused of a conspiracy with intent to commit genocide. His indictment also include the following charges, that of direct and public incitement to commit genocide, as well as genocide itself, or alternatively, complicity in, the crime, complicity in the commission of the crime of genocide. By a decision of the 2nd of February 2012, the trial chamber 3 of the ICTR found Karimera guilty of genocide, conspiracy to commit genocide, direct and public incitement of genocide, rape and extermination as crimes against humanity and the war crime of killing. Both Karimera and Negurum Patse were sentenced for life. This judgment came after seven years of trial, the withdrawal of three judges and the death of one other accused, and also the controversial decision taking judicial notice that a genocide did in fact take place in Rwanda in 1994. Thus relieving the prosecution of having to establish and present evidence in order to prove the allegation beyond reasonable doubt in every case. Incidentally, I was a part of the proceedings in the case of Karimera in the ICTR in 2012. The third case I would like to discuss with you is Jean Kambanda, prosecutor versus Kambanda. The accused, Jean Kambanda, was the prime minister in the caretaker government of Rwanda from the beginning of the Rwandan genocide the third case I would like to discuss with you is the prosecutor versus Jean Kambanda. The accused, Jean Kambanda, was the prime minister in the caretaker government of Rwanda from the beginning of the Rwandan genocide in 1994. This appointment took place shortly after the assassination of Juvenal Habyarimana. Kambanda was accused of abusing his authority and his position of power and the trust of the civilian population in him by not taking any of the necessary reasonable measures to prevent his subordinates from committing gross violations of the rule of law against the Tutsis in Rwanda. He in fact supported uh, radio television Libre de Mil Colline, which lauded the massacres and extermination of Tutsi and moderate Hutus who were not in favor of the genocide. On September 4th, 1998, Kambanda pled guilty to genocide and crimes against humanity 
murder and extermination and the trial chamber one of the ICTR sentenced him to life. Kambanda was held criminally responsible because of his direct participation in the commission of massacres and because of his failure to stop or prevent them or to punish the perpetrators under his control from the commission of the acts amounting to genocide. In addition to this, the trial chamber accused Kambanda in the indictment of distributing arms and ammunition in the provinces of Butare and Gitarama with the knowledge that these would be used to massacre civilians. Kambanda appealed against his sentence and sub subsequently requested that his guilty plea be quashed and that he stand for trial. Before the chamber of the, uh, the second chamber, that is the appeals chamber of the ICTR, Kambanda argued the usual defenses. One, that he had not been given a lawyer of his choice and that even when he did finally receive a suitable legal representation, the prosecution had influenced the, assi the assignment of the advocate to him. In addition to the unsuitability of defense counsel, Kambanda accused his defense counsel, Oliver Michael Inglis, of inadequate representation. He further claimed that the registry had organized his detention in facilities in such a way that he was isolated from other detainees and that he felt that these were extremely uh, oppressive and harsh arrangements unduly created to inconvenience him. In response to this, the prosecution pointed out uh, that for some time after his arrest, Kambanda had refused any legal representation until the registry managed to convey to him that in the interest of justice, he had to be represented by counsel. Kambanda subsequently requested the registry to assign Mr. Inglis to him as defense counsel. However, after pleading guilty and being found guilty, he resigned his uh, plea which the court did not uh, accept because it was not provided for within the rules of the court. Uh, the appeals chamber dismissed all the grounds advanced by the accused and upheld the sentence given to him by trial chamber one. Therefore, Kambanda received a life sentence. The fourth case that serves as um, a landmark decision is the case of Ferdinand Nahimana, Jean Bosco Baraya Guiza and Hassan Ngeze. These three cases uh, concerned the roles of Ferdinand Nahimana and Jean Bosco Barayag Visa in the radio station known as Radio Television Libre de Mille Collines, RTLM, that of Hassan Ingeze in the publication of the newspaper, the Kangura newspaper, as well as Jean Bosco Barayag Visa's involvement in the coalition pour la défense uh, de la République, say they are, and the role of Hassan Ngeze in the killing of Tutsis in the Gizenyi prefecture on April 7th, 1994. RTLM was a radio station which, during the Rwandan genocide, broadcast information and propaganda that assisted in coordinating the killings and fueled the hatred of the population against not only Tutsi but also moderate Hutu. Hassan Ngeze was a Rwandan journalist and he was best known for spreading anti-Tutsi propaganda and the Hutu dominance through his newspaper, the Kangura. Hassan Ngeze was a founding member and leading figure in the CDR, a Rwandan Hutu political party known for facilitating the genocide against the Tutsi. The Kangura published lists of individuals to be exterminated or el eliminated by the military and the militia organization, the Interahamwe and the Impuza Mugambi militias during the genocide. In addition, Ngeze is alleged to have supervised and taken part himself in the torture, rape and killings in his native prefecture of Gizenyi. Barayaguiza was the chairman of the executive committee for the RTLM during the genocide and was a founding member, like Ngeze, of the CDR. 
He conspired to exterminate the Tutsi population and eliminate members of the opposition by broadcasting messages of ethnic hatred that incited violence, training militia and distributing weapons to militia men of the Interahamwe and the Impuga Muzi. The preparation and diffusion of lists of people to be killed were also attributable to Barayagwiza. Trial Chamber 1 of the ICTR originally found the accused guilty of the conspiracy to commit genocide, genocide, indirect and direct public incitement to commit genocide and persecution and extermination on the counts of crimes against humanity. It sentenced each of them to a single term of life, life imprisonment. It did, however, reduce Barayag Visa's sentence to 35 years from life, taking into account the violation of his rights. The accused went on to appeal their convictions and their sentences before the appeals chamber. The appeals chamber of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda reversed certain findings of trial chamber one and affirmed certain others. The appeals chamber reduced Nahimana's sentence to 30 years of imprisonment and Barayag Visa's sentence to 32 years of imprisonment from 35 awarded by the trial chamber. The appeals chamber later substituted Ingeze's life sentence by a prison term of 35 years. The next case I would like to discuss with you is the case of prosecutor versus Simon Bikindi. Simon Bikindi was a singer-songwriter, composer and leader of a ballet troupe known as the Irin Diro during the Rwandan genocide of 1994. Bikindi was an ethnic Hutu whose songs which were played all the time on radio, television, Libre de Mil Colin to incite killings were directed against the Tutsi population and allegedly incited hatred and violence among, against them among the Hutu as well as the moderate Hutu. It was said that Bikindi composed, sang, recorded and distributed musical works extolling Hutu solidarity and accusing the Tutsi of having historically enslaved the Hutu. Bikindi was also accused of take, having personally participated in killings during the Rwandan genocide, both in Kigali and in the Gizenyi prefecture, and in having helped to recruit, organize and train the youth which comprised the Intera Hamwe militia. The indictment against Bikindi was issued by the ICTR, in which Bikindi was charged on multiple counts. The charge sheet against Bikindi included the conspiracy to commit genocide or alternatively complicity in genocide, direct and public incitement to commit genocide and murder and persecution as crimes against humanity. On the 2nd of December 2008, Trial Chamber 3 of the ICTR found Simon Bik guilty of direct and public incitement to commit genocide based on public exhortations to kill the Tutsi, which he made on the Kivumu Kayove Road in the Gisenyi Prefecture in June 1994. The ICTR ruled beyond reasonable doubt that Bikindi was associated with the extremist Interahamwe paramilitary organization and publicly urged Hutu to exterminate the Tutsi, known in his songs and in popular fiction as cockroaches or in Inyenzi to use the Kenya Rwandan word. Subsequently, the trial chamber sentenced him to 15 years of imprisonment. Bikindi appealed his convictions and both the accused as well as the prosecution challenged uh, the sentence, the prosecution asking for life imprisonment for Bikindi. The appeals chamber dismissed the appeals from both the parties in their entirety and affirmed the sentence delivered by the trial chamber. The next decision I would like to discuss with you is the case of Gakumbitsi, prosecutor versus Sylvester Gakumbitsi. Sylvester Gakumbitsi was the mayor of the commune of Rusumo in Rwanda. In April 1994, a time of extreme tension 
between the Hutu and the Tutsi. Gakumbitsi led an attack on the Nyarubuye parish during which numerous Tutsi taking refuge in the parish were brutally killed. Gakumbitsi personally distributed arms and organized meetings where he assisted in the killing of the Tutsi population by exercising authority over his subordinates and instigating and allowing numerous rapes and sexual assaults on Tutsi women to take place under his watch in the province that he was responsible for. Further, Kakumbitsi used his position of leadership in order to meet up with high-ranking high members within the commune and proliferate and promote the propaganda to exterminate the Tutsi. On June 17, 2004, Trial Chamber of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda found Gakumbitsi guilty of genocide and of crimes against humanity for rape and extermination. The court did, however, acquit him of the charges that he was uh, originally indicted with for crimes, for crimes against humanity of murder and complicity in genocide. He was then sentenced to 30 years in prison. Um, this was of course appealed against uh, and on 7th July 2006, the appeals chamber confirmed the decision of the trial chamber but also found Gakumbitsi guilty for murder as a crime against humanity. His sentence subsequently increased to life, to life imprisonment from the 30 years that he was initially awarded by the trial chamber. The next important case that uh, we should look at is the case of Kaishema and Ruzindana, prosecutor versus Claymore Kaishema and Obed Ruzindana. Two accused, of course, in this case, Claymore Kaishema and Obed Ruzindana. Kaishema was the prefect of the Kibuye province from, December, from July 1992 until he left for the Zaire in July 1994. He was indicted on April 24, 1996 for having had a part to play in four massacres at the Catholic Church and at the Home St. John complex in Kibuye, at the stadium in Kibuye town and at the church in Mubuga and in the area of Bisesero all of which resulted in the deaths of thousands of men, women and children, including Tutsi and moderate Hutu. Kaishama was charged with 24 counts as the prefect of Kibuye, with involvement as the superior in the massacres that took place in that area from April to June 1994. Obed Ruzindana, his co-accused, was allegedly said to have played a prominent role in the systematic extermination of those Tutsi who had sought refuge in the Bizesero region located in the Kibuye prefecture. The massacres in that region went on for several months from April to June 1994 and resulted in tens of thousands of deaths. Ruzindana was charged with five counts for his roles committed there. Ruzindana allegedly provided transport for the assailants and incited them to attack the Tutsi who had sought refuge in the Bizesero region. Ruzindana purportedly came up with a plan of attack that was to be implemented and was the leader of the assailants and someone that they reported to. He also personally took part in the massacres. Evidence presented by prosecution suggests that he distributed weapons to the assailants and launched the attack by opening fire on Tutsi refugees who had come into the province of Bisesero. On 21st May 1999, Trial Chamber 2 of the ICTR found both Ruzindana and Kaishema guilty of the crime of genocide. Kaishema was found guilty on four counts and was sentenced to life imprisonment and Ruzindana was found guilty of one count of genocide and was sentenced to 25 years of imprisonment. Both appealed uh, their convictions as well as the length of the sentence imposed on them. Their appeals were based on several grounds, 
including the lack of equality of arms in between prosecution and defense, the defective indictment created against them and inadequate proof against them that established their specific roles in these attacks beyond reasonable doubt. After reviewing these arguments, the appeals chamber in The Hague ruled that the trial chamber, which is the finder of fact, did not err in any way on their decision or err on a question of law or fact in this case. Thus, the uh, appeals chamber affirmed the decision laid, laid down by the trial chamber and upheld both the conviction and the sentencing. The prosecution appealed against the judgment of the trial chamber, arguing that the accused ought to have been convicted on all counts. However, the prosecutor's appeal was dismissed as it was not filed within the prescribed time limit given under the statute of the ICTR. The next case that I think is a landmark decision of the ICTR is the case of Muzema. We have discussed this case in the context of foregoing modules. This is the case of prosecutor versus Alfred Muzema. During the 1994 Rwandan genocide, the accused Alfred Muzema was a director of the Gizovu tea factory in the Kibuye prefecture. Muzema actively partook in crimes committed against the Tutsi population during April, May and June in Gizovu and Gijita communes in the Kibuye prefecture of Rwanda. In his position of authority, he exercised control over his employees at the tea factory. Thus, he had the authority to prevent the use of vehicles, uniforms or other possessions of the factory in carrying out massacres or to sanction anyone using them for the purposes of massacring the Tutsi population. Muzema was said to have played a decisive role in the extermination of the Tutsi uh, who sought refuge in the commune of 1994 after they fled to the hilly region of Bizarero in the district of Kibuye. The massacres in this region uh, took place continuously from April to June 1994 and caused tens of thousands of deaths. On 26th April 1994, Musema reportedly directed and participated himself in an attack on the hillside at Gitawa. He was said to have arrived there on board one of the tea factory's vehicles and to have participated in a large scale attack against the Tutsi who had taken refuge there and to have fired shots into the crowd of Tutsi. He was accompanied by employees of the Gizovu tea factory who were under his direct responsibility command and control. The prosecution brought evidence and alleged that on a number of uh, occasions during this period between April and May 1994, Musema transported armed attackers, including armed attackers who were employees of his own factory, to different locations in the Gizovu and Gijita communes and instructed them to find Tutsis attack them, especially those who were seeking refuge in hilly areas. He himself took part in these attacks. The indictment against Musema was amended to include charges that he committed acts of rape and that he ordered and instigated others to rape and kill Tutsi women. On 27th January in the year 2000, Trial Chamber 1 of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda found Musema guilty of genocide and of crimes against humanity, including extermination and rape. With regard to certain allegations concerning specific attacks, the chambers held that either the evidence presented was not sufficient or that Musema's alibi cast doubt on the evidence presented by prosecution to the extent that it was not beyond reasonable doubt. Nevertheless, the chamber was convinced that Musema had participated in the attacks at Gitawa Hill, in the Rovirambo Hill, in the Muyira Hill and at Mumataba 
during April and May and that his alibi for that period was rejected for, by the trial chamber. Further, the trial chamber found that he had raped a woman named Neera Musugi and subsequently encouraged others to rape her. For carrying out and for encouraging such acts, trial chamber, which is a finder of fact, found Musema guilty of genocide and crimes against humanity, that is the crimes of extermination and rape, and sentenced him to life imprisonment. Musema, of course, appealed this verdict, but on the 16th of November 2001, on the basis of new evidence presented, the appeals chamber acquitted him of count seven, which was rape as a crime against humanity. The appeals chamber did, however, confirm the rest of the trial chamber's decision, including maintaining and upholding the sentence given to him, which was a life sentence. Another case, which is important as a landmark decision is the case of Pauline Nirma Suhuko. Shortly after the death by assassination of the then president of Rwanda, Juvenal Habyarimana, on April 6th, 1994, ethnic tensions between the Hutu and Tutsi populations in Rwanda that had previously resulted in civil war in the early 1990s reignited an interim government was put into place. This government developed a plan to eradicate the Tutsi enemy with the use of the armed forces and various civilian militia gro groups, including the Hutu-led paramilitary youth organization Intera Hamwe, the leader of which was in fact Naira Masuhuko, the accused's son. The six accused in this case were all military and polit military, political or civilian authorities in the province of Butare, the Butare commune, which is in the south of Rwanda. Nira Masuhuko was the Minister of Family and Women's Development. In Sabimana, served as the prefect of Butare from April until 17th June, July, June 1994. In Teziriayo, was a member of the Ministry of the Interior. Kanyabashi was the mayor of the Ingoma commune. Indayam Baje was the mayor of Muganza commune. And Intaho Bali was the leader of the unit of the Interahamwe. Following the replacement of the former prefect of Butare by Insabi Mana on April 20th, 1994, large scale massacres and rape of Tutsis took place in the Butare province. Thousands were killed at the Mugombwe church in Kabuye Hill, Kabakobwe Hill and Matyazo Clinic. The interim government implemented a policy by which roadblocks were set up so that Tutsi could be identified, abducted, raped and killed by soldiers and Interahamwe militia. Megaphone announcements were made uh, throughout Butare town and throughout Butare province, encouraging the Hutu to hunt down and systematically eradicate the Tutsi. These announcements pronounced the Tutsi as the common enemy of the Hutu and used the Kenya Rwandan word Inyenzi, meaning cockroach for them. The ICTR convicted each of the accused variously for genocide, conspiracy to commit genocide, direct and public incitement of genocide, uh, the crimes against humanity, of extermination, persecution, and rape and war crimes of violence to life and outrages upon personal digni dignity. The 18 page long summary of the judgment discusses the horrific events, if, including rape, abduction, beating and killing of Tutsis in Butare perpetrated by Nirama Suhuko and other officials of the interim government responsible. Nirama Suhuko, Ntaho Bali, Ndayambaje were sentenced to life imprisonment. Kanyabashi, Interizar Yayo and Nsabimana received 35, 30 and 25 years of imprisonment respectively. The appeals chamber of the ICTR confirmed 
the decision of the trial chamber. Thank you.